Hello, and welcome to Ag Wisdom Wednesday. My name is Wayne Key with the Putnam County UT Extension Office. I want to welcome you today. We've got some interesting things we want to talk about today, and it really falls down to insect and disease prevention in the garden. Uh, whether it be fruit plantings or vegetables, many of us in our home garden right now have things that have been set out. We've gotten the garden established. I've seen several of them across the county that have uh, lots of fruits and vegetables that have gotten started. And so we certainly want to make sure that now that we've spent the time and the money and the effort going through to get those vegetables in the ground and get them planted, how to protect them from insect and diseases this summer when temperatures warm up and we have more, more problems with them. The biggest thing to tell you before you bring your specimen to me like this one here a gentleman brought this one in um, Japanese maple it's got some winter injuries some cold injury to it so pretty easy to identify but these are the kind of things that I get a lot on my desk that people drop off and drop by whether it be tomatoes peppers uh, cucumbers whatever the problem is in their garden and they want to know what's happened and, and that's because most of our sprays and, and the concept behind controlling insects and diseases has to start at the very beginning once those plants are in the ground the products that are available are typically curative, meaning the fence, the, or pr protective rather than curative, excuse me. And so those sprays that you use are a spray that goes on to help protect the plant from insects and diseases affecting them. One, uh, once a disease infection or the, the insect has damaged the, the limb or the leaf or whatever is the issue with the plant, it's often too late sometimes to gain adequate control. So without using a lot of products and a lot of time, if we'll use protective um, sprays, insecticides, fungicides, we can certainly do a better job at the beginning of the planting season rather than waiting until something's too late and then you call me or bring something by that we've got to apply some products and hopefully stop what's happening and prevent further damage down the road. A lot of people will ask, well, hey, if I do a good job of spraying and I spray extra amount of dose or I go beyond the label, for example, and spray something, which is certainly not recommended, they want to know, is that all that we have to do to take care of diseases and insects? And that's not necessarily the truth. A lot of times management practices in the garden or in the uh, fruit plantings, for example, getting rid of disease or de uh, decaying fruit, for example, and getting that out of there. If a tomato plant is des uh, diseased or has problems with it, taking that plant out of the, the mixture, taking it out of the garden, getting it away and keeping that from spreading to other plants is certainly a good prevention as well. Sanitation, removing disease stems, dead leaves, pruning things that are, that are problematic in the garden and taking them out will do a good job as well in controlling these kind of things. If you decide on an insecticide or a fungicide to control the product, whatever's going on, the, the, the situation, make sure you use a clean sprayer. Uh, I have had stories of people that have used a sprayer that was used also for weed control, for example, and then call me two days later and realize they'd used the wrong sprayer in their garden and killed everything. So make sure you've got the right sprayer. Make sure you wash it out when you're done with it, clean it, make sure it's ready to go for the next time it needs to be used. Um, Make sure if you have questions or issues, call me here at the UT Extension office, 526-4561. You can email me. Uh, we're available on Facebook, uh, on, the, on the web, at our UT Extension website. Uh, you can bring in samples like this gentleman did. These are very, very common to bring me things. Uh, you can email me. Uh, email me any kind of photos. If you have something going on and you want to send me a photo, I'll be glad to help you and shoot you some information and tell you how to handle your situation. Hope you enjoyed this section of Ag Wisdom Wednesday. We'll see you 